Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Trailmakers, and we're going back into the workshop today to find the craziest, most interesting, or strangest creations that I happened to come across this week. And we're starting off with this thing right here, which is pretty unique if I do say so myself. So you might be wondering what exactly this is, and this is actually kind of like a walker, walker crawler type thing. So check this out. It's super quiet because there's no engines. I don't even think there's any power cores or anything on this. This is a zero power core vehicle and it totally works. It's like a weird, it, it almost makes me a little bit uncomfortable looking at it. Like it just, there's so many legs and it's very insecty. And the fact that the legs are all facing forward is also for some reason a little bit unsettling to me. Like it, it just feels like they should be more spread out around the body, but they're all just kind of centralized facing in the same direction. And as you can see, it works really great. So this is called The Crawler, and it is by Lost Hollow. So up next, I actually meant to look at this last week when it was slightly more relevant, but now that it's uh, pretty much a dead meme, we're gonna look at a Tesla Cybertruck in Trailmakers. This is by Nordic Jonas. Now, many of you probably saw that I built the Tesla truck in main assembly, which has a lot more freedom when it comes to the shape of things that you build in that game. So it's pretty impressive how accurate uh, the, oh, It's durable. It is durable. So uh, at least he got that part right. <laughs> but it is pretty impressive how accurate this thing actually looks considering the tools at our disposal in this game in comparison. Um, and it is very, very prone to flipping. I don't know if that's uh, if, if that's how the, the real Tesla truck is. I hope not. Like I can't even turn <laughs> at all. Like. I think it's way too powerful. It's supposed to have really fast acceleration, but this is like, oh, the suspension might be a little bit off. I think the suspension might be the issue. What What is wrong with the suspension here? It's just normal suspension, but something's just making it completely unstable when it comes to turning pretty much at any, well, we're going pretty fast too. All right, if I'm going slow when I turn, there we, okay, we can go about, we can go about 40 kilometers an hour and turn as sharp as we can without flipping over. But if I go above 40, then we're flipping. All right, well, let's see how fast this thing can go, hopefully without flipping over. I'm gonna try to go down to this straight away. All right, 188, 190. That's actually pretty fast. That is, considering it's a truck too, it's pretty fast. All right, and it looks like it caps out just above 190. And now let's see how sharp I can turn. <laughs> I feel like I'm a skateboarder now. All right, and can I get some air? Oh, look at that. Whoa. And there we go. So this thing actually so far is impressively durable. So let's do a head-on collision at full speed right into this rock and uh, see if we end up surviving or not. I was not actually expecting that much destruction, but that was fun to watch. All right, moving on. Okay, up next we have the ultimate propeller plane. Quite a hefty claim there. So this is by Tim Dickinson. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so let me find a spot to take. I'm gonna go in this direction over here. All right, so I think we just press X to detach. So here we go. And here we go. Here we go. And here we go. Okay, here we go. Oh, 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 I did it. I did it. Okay, okay. This is a really cool design. I think according to the description, he did model it off of real propeller, of some type of real propeller plane concept. Um, it definitely, it, it feels like I have to keep pitching up in order to not fall down. If I'm going level, yeah, we definitely lose altitude if I'm level. I feel like there needs to be a little bit more lift so we can have a nice level of flight. But how are you supposed to land this thing? If this is modeled after a real design, how does it land? I guess we could try to land like, oh no, that's that's really difficult. Oh, I messed up. I messed up, I messed up, I messed up, I messed up. Oh, oh, I recovered. I unmessed up. All right, I'm just gonna try to get over to the aircraft carrier. There's no real way to do this good, is there? Okay, nope, nope, this isn't working. This isn't working. 
Nailed it. All right, well, that's definitely an interesting concept that I haven't seen before when it comes to propeller planes. So now that we're over by the water, uh, I have a boat to show you guys. So we're gonna be looking at Battleship. And this is by a name that I cannot read. Oh, bo okay, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it did a full backflip and landed, didn't it? I don't know why I thought space was going to be forward, but probably W. Yeah, W is forward. Okay, so um, let's drive around for a little bit before we absolutely destroy ourselves immediately. We now know that we can destroy ourselves. You can see the cannon is aimed directly at the cannon in front of it. So I got to figure out how to aim these things so I don't completely destroy myself. How does this thing turn? It looks like we got two paddles in the back. And that appears to be the primary method of turning. Okay, so I'm gonna press number one. Oh, interesting. Number one and number two turns left and right. All right, so I'm gonna aim to the side here. And then number three and four, I assume, goes up and... There we go. Okay, now space is to fire. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, I gotta spawn another one of these things in, and we're gonna fire at it. But first, what are these other buttons? O? Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, okay, it's zero. Oh, look at that. We can activate the radar. Is that radar, I'm assuming? Oh, there's what O and P are doing. All right, we turn on these lights individually. Okay, cool. And that looks like it should be turning as well. Oh, is that like a range finder, like aiming device? Oh, yeah, that turns with the guns. Okay, okay. And then we could fire like this if we wanted to. All right, I'm seeing how it works now. And I think that's everything. All right, so now I'm going to spawn another one in, and we are going to attempt to blow up the first one. Oh, this is so cool. All right, let's go ahead and take aim. You think I can get on the first shot? Probably not. All right, here we go and fire. Oh, that is way too far, isn't it? All right, come on. Come on, be the one, be the one. There, oh, that looked so, what is that? What just went flying? Look how high it went. I can't get out. I can't see. I want it. where did it go? Where did it? I think it disappeared in the air. All right, and then of course, we can go ahead and aim straight down at ourselves, and there we are. Perfect, that is a really fun creation. Okay, up next we have a weightlifting mini game, apparently. This was made from one of the weekly challenges. Apparently the goal is we have to alternate between A and D at specific speeds. All right, there was a somewhat complicated uh, list of instructions, but I'm gonna try my best to remember. The first thing was that we have to use the top of seat camera. There we go. You know what, this is a terrible direction to be facing. Hold on. There we go. Oh boy, look at this guy. All right, and then we gotta press A and D rapidly, and then when it gets to the next phase, we have to press space, and I should know what that is. All right, here we go. Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. There's the phases up there. All right, now I gotta press space. Oh, oh. Oh, wow, so now I have to press faster in order to get it to go. I don't know how that works. All right, now I gotta press space again. There we go. And I gotta go even faster. Uh oh, oh, I've switched my camera accidentally. No, I'm losing. Hold on, where's my top of seat camera? Top of seat camera. Top of, I'm lo I lost, I totally lost. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Here we go, here we go. I oh, no, I gotta do it the faster one the whole time now. Uh, oh no, I gotta press space. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Go, I don't know if you can hear me hitting my keyboard here. Uh, this is too hard. Come on. Press space, press space. I gotta press, there we go. Go, 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 go. Ah. Oh, we did it. Whoa, we get a trophy. That is awesome. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. And Rainbow Makers got launched into the sky. Oh, that is so cool. So I think the reason why it was so difficult is because he says you get penalized if you actually go back to a previous phase after going to a later phase. So I think I was going even faster because I let it go all the way back because I messed up my camera. Yeah, like the first phase is only this fast going if I just do it right from the beginning. And then there we go. And then I got to go a little bit faster. Oh, I'm doing this with one hand now. It's so much easier. And then there we go. Come on. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so much easier if you do not let yourself get penalized. I love the rainbow maker launchers. 
All right, well, that was a super impressive creation. I don't know. There's a lot of logic and stuff on this, as you can clearly see. I have no idea how any of that works, so I'm glad somebody else was on it. Okay, up next, we have a really interesting looking thing. It's called a Rock'em Bot, and in parentheses, it says very silly, which sounds like my kind of creation. This is by Mr. Fezzington. All right, whoa, look at these lights. This is kind of crazy. All right, so apparently number one is to switch between different modes. Oh, that's cool. And then we can kind of just settle down here. What happens if I try to go in this mode? Okay, absolutely nothing. It's basically like a stabilization mode. All right, and then I guess we press, whoa! That is so violent. Holy cow, I was not expecting that level of force with these punches. That is insane. What does space do? Oh, oh, okay. I didn't notice that. So yeah, that's it. Uh, that, that's all the controls. So of course I'm gonna spawn another one in and we're gonna punch the daylights out of it. I hope you're hungry because you're about to get a face full of knuckle sandwich. All right, and uh, uh, uh. Uh, okay, I, I feel like I did more damage to myself to be honest, but hold on my, my right hand is still kind of okay So let's go ahead and oh, that's the left hand. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, uh. Okay, um, I Really feel like I'm not I'm not doing myself any favors in this battle here. Oh Well, there you have it. I am the winner. I mean, my opponent wasn't exactly fighting back, but hey, I'll take the win when I can get one. All right, what about if I hit him from behind? Oh, I've, I've disabled myself. Oh, there we go. All right, come on, get the other hand out. There we go. All right, and, uh, oh, oh no. I've taken his legs. Okay, and, uh. <laughs> this is kind of great. All right, well, that was, uh, that was a lot more effective that- Oh, yeah, and he's gone. That, that was much more effective that time. I enjoyed that thoroughly. Super fun robot that one is. Okay, and last up here for this episode, we have Bumblebee the Silent Hyperjet. Now, Silent Hyperjet really intrigues me. This is by DanCSO007. All right, I have no idea how taking off is supposed to work with this. Uh, ooh, all right, so there's our roll control and our pitch control all, all on the same thing. Here, oh, here we go, here we go. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Whee! Okay, stop, 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 stop. All right, so it uses only mini thrusters, and uh, there is also a gimbal jet inside, which I think is to help to help take off probably, but it works fine without having the gimbal jet on. So yeah, this thing is super quiet. Here it is without background music. Like, the wind is louder than the jet itself. It's a little bit difficult to, uh, to control the roll since it's so thin. I'm gonna try to go under here. There we go. That wasn't so bad. But yeah, the roll is very, very, like, wobbly compared to the pitch. The pitch is nice and easy to control, but the roll is a little bit... Oh, yeah, I didn't even mean to do that full loop there. But yeah, this thing is really... How much speed can we get? Well, we're going kind of down now, so we have gravity on our side, but we're gonna break 600. Can we break 600 going kind of flat? Mmm, almost. We're almost there. All right, I know I know you all want to see me do some crazy stunts and uh, fail, so I'm gonna try to go underneath one of these ramps in one of those uh, grid-shaped things, and I cannot control my roll at all here. Oh no, okay, yeah, I'm failing. It was a silent crash too, did you notice that? <laughs> It made no noise upon impact, so I guess it really lives up to its name. All right, let's go ahead and take off from here. All right, I'll go ahead and take off from here instead. There we go. And can I make it through Hoop of Fire? Probably not. Yeah, I, I really cannot control my roll very well at all. I don't know if I've mentioned, but um, the roll is really hard to control. All right, what about this one? This one's looking good. This one's looking good. That was just pure luck because the roll is really hard to control on this plane. All right, and I'm just gonna fly into the mountain. <laughs> hey, that one made a noise. Am I, wait, oh, I literally flew into the mountain. Hey guys, 
All right, so which one of these creations uh, was your favorite in this episode? We actually looked at a lot this time. They were just kind of shorter demos of each creation. If you want to see more awesome workshop creations, then you're going to want to check out this playlist of all of these episodes. I hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.